three match T20 series. What's your prediction? Three nil win for India. Bangladesh can only compete if the wicket is slightly or slower side because then their their fourth spinner Mustafizul comes into play as well. Can India continue the dominance they did in the Test match? Can they do the same at the shortest format of the game? Look, I think this is not going to be as easy as the Test series was. Uh, if you remove Jitesh and Sanju, who are the wicket keeping option, all of the rest of the uh, players have you know given a turn to the ball at some point. You think how seriously will somebody like a Bangladesh take this T20 series after losing the Test series to him? As we all expected, just like Gurpal ji said in the first Test match preview as well. How many days will the test matches take place? Because India is winning definitely. Clean sweep has been successfully done by Team India today afternoon. Nobody, I think against all odds, it was written at Kanpur that it is going to be a draw. But you see, it's different beast. It's Gauti ball, I must tell you, we are talking about. We are shifting towards the shortest format of the game. But I'll just take one minute because these players deserve that amount of credit, I must tell you. Starting with Dutsav. Reflecting from yesterday, third session, did you ever believe that there was on a card for India to make a comeback and seal the victory? Well, the way you know uh, the guys came out on the field uh, on day four, uh, I was pretty sure that they will go for a victory. But I did not think that the the way they accelerated in the third innings that was possible because the way Bangladesh played in the in the first innings, it seemed like they are looking for a draw and a draw is inevitable. They played 35 overs, you know, all seven wickets fell down, but uh, you know, yeah. it it just, it just seemed like India is going to come out with an attacking mindset, but this will be the attacking mindset nobody would have thought of. Nobody would have thought of two fifty in Absolutely. that uh, in that number of overs, two eighty nine for nine. Also, the lower order collapsed again. Uh, but uh, you know, the thing is that all the players batted with the same amount of selflessness. Nobody uh, went for their own personal milestones, and this is something uh, that India might be looking forward. That fifties and hundreds are going to be overrated, and the only thing that the Absolutely. teams will be playing for is the team. It's for the team. Absolutely bang on target, Utsav. Now, coming on to the man who said at the day one of the test match that this is not going to take much time. Gurpal ji, yesterday when India came on to bat, did you expect that kind of an approach? We all expected India to bat till lunch today. But this kind of an approach, is this something we need to get used to when it comes to Gautam Gambhir and Rohit Sharma, the duo? See, before coming to yesterday, while whenever we discuss in the groups and everything, we were saying that we have lost the important 12 points or a win for this test match. But when we when we saw the weather is clear for two days, so I thought yeah, two days could be enough for Indian team. If we can get the first, we have to get the get them bundled mm -hmm. out in the first session or a, maybe before uh, before uh, or a half an hour after lunch. That we did so so very well because the planning and the execution has to start from the settling out Bang Bangladesh in the first inning because we hardly have only 35 overs in the first day. And last two days, there were only rain and rain and rain. And there was a waiting absolutely. game going on. And Frankly, similarly, ab absolutely, sorry to interrupt, but Utsa, one more point before we move on to the T20s now, it's high time. But talking about the fitness of the players as well, because if you reflect yesterday, India bowled a lot of overs, very short span of time, India batted quickly. And once again, they came on to the bowling because no other teams would do that, I must tell you. They would give their players one day of rest at least and come back next morning. So, what's your take on this one? How much credit does these players and also the management were looking into eye of the fit? See, definitely, like, uh, you know, I think MS Dhoni brought this uh, fitness first mindset into the team and Virat Kohli just aggravated it. And at this point, I, I will note that any of the players in the squad or even around the squad are, uh, you know, can be considered unfit. You know, even the catches that Rohit Sharma has been taking, he is absolutely fit and, you know, uh, he is that kind of a person who has, you know, normalized uh, eating, you know, indigenous dal, right. uh, dal chawal and still being the fittest uh, on the ground. Uh, the way he has batted and, you know, at no point did India felt like they have switched off or they are not in the zone. Uh, you know, when they had the bat in hand or the ball in hand, they just were, were spot on. Jadeja coming in and, you know, three overs, three runs, three wickets. Uh, just with Dumra getting the wicket of Mushfiq or Rahim of the last ball oh, before lunch. Delivery, you know, it just I seemed like yeah. everything is, yeah, absolutely. Everything seemed like you know, a poetry in motion, nowhere, you know, it seemed like professionalism at its peak. And, you know, in Team India needs to be taken very, very seriously when it comes to Test cricket now. 100% and at home especially, I just want to add a little bit, at home, it's going to be something really important because wins are coming on short, the streak continues for India being undefeated at home. 
Bangladesh couldn't after defeating Pakistan. They thought they could get something out of this one. This is what we have for you all, folks. When it comes to Team India, under the leadership of Rohit Sharma, under the head coach of Gautam Gambhir in the Test cricket. Moving on to the shortest format of the game. None of these players who are part of the Test squad are in contention of this squad as well. Very, very young squad. We saw most of them in the Sri Lanka T20 series as well. Paji, once again, do, if you look into the one glance into the squad, is it a good enough squad to be picked? I guess it's a it's a very good squad. Very good squad. Most of the players are, are from the uh, Zimbabwe tour and from Sri Lanka tour. Hardik Pandya was not in Zimbabwe. He was in Sri Lanka. All the all the the, the players pick themselves. Great surprise having Varun Chakravarti back in the scheme of things must be. I guess Gautam Gambhir must be looking forward to 2026 World Cup. If Varun Chakravarti can have a good form, he could be a wiser, wisely spinner, wisely spinner, and can be used in. Some games, not you, you don't play him every match, but in the, Some, in the someone game, Gautam Gambi knows very closely at KKR as well. How to get best of the Varun, Varun Chakrat because he's your he's a he's a mystery spinner which we lack as an Indian team. That's why the teams we have the mystery spinners and all. And now with, we are not thinking about Chahal, so it's better to groom somebody like Varun Chakravarti. Well, we have two years, we have still two, two years left, two years for the T20 World Cup. So I guess it's a, it's a great it's a great move. And that's the score I'm, I'm happy move. with, happy with the squad. Okay, so no kulcha anymore. That's something which Paji has given a concern out of it. But uh, Utsav, similar question. Three match test T20 series. Can India continue the dominance they did in the test match? Can they do the same at the shortest format of the game? Look, I think this is not going to be as easy as the test series was. Uh, let's be honest, the test series was, uh, you know, bread and butter kind of situation for India. Uh, but, you know, we haven't had an easy run of T20s right now. We struggled to win against Zimbabwe. We lost the first T20 match. We came back stronger. Uh, even against Sri Lanka, we had three, you know, nail-biting matches and we lost the ODI series. So, this is something that, you know, it will be very keen to look at uh, the players. You know, the one thing that is that seems, uh, that has changed with the Indian setup is that not just the uh, past performance or the potential has been uh, looked into, but also the IPL performances have been given equal weightage. Mm -hmm. You can see Varun Chakravarti in there as Gurupal sir, uh, rightly pointed out, along with uh, along with him, even Mayank Yadav has been fast tracked fast -tracked into the side. Uh, Harshit Rana has made it. Uh, Abhishek Sharma obviously uh, scored a brilliant century, and it is nice uh, seeing him back. Oh, the only one thing that seems to be lacking in the squad is uh, probably you could have given a longer run to Ruturaj Gaikwad. So for the Ruturaj thing, uh, what I have learned from the sources that Ruturaj has been considered as a backup opener for BGT. So that is the only yeah, that's reason what I have he's, not heard. Been, he's not been picked in the T20 T20 squad. So they are making him available. They may play him. Uh, against New Zealand or for definitely for sure picking him in the four test series that is why he's not there so similar mm. question to you what wrong has somebody like an Abhiman Nuishwaran done then Paji so I'm been following domestic cricket I know Abhiman Nuishwaran uh, Priyank Panchal the other players as well were performing day in day out uh, in the domestic Ravi Sai Kishore as well even Sai Sudarshan but we have only 15 players to pick and we have Shubman Gill is your, is your kind of a, he can be promoted as an opener uh, KL Rao can be an opener so, you may see Ishan Kishan as well in the team. So, that is the thing. Uh, until unless he has not played any domestic cricket or international in the, at a home condition, you cannot pick a straight away an opener for the Australian condition. Ruturaj, okay. having exposure of playing international cricket, scored 100 against uh, Australia in T20, go to the T20, having played one day cricket and current and in, in form batsman from the last two years because he and Safar has been awarded because of the same thing because they are consistent each, every, every time in every year. So that that is why they are, they have missed uh, I mean, my vision because I guess once Rohit will say goodbye to Test cricket, you may see these players uh, come in. That that is true. That we we might see that in a new future. But Utsav, you've spoken about the problems we have faced in the previous couple of series against uh, Zimbabwe and Sri Lanka. It's not going to be as easy as it was in the Test format. How much do you look into the leadership of Surya Kumar Yadav, especially in the previous two T20? Do you think the approach and the casualty approach he took with a bright smile on his face and the aggressive nature that he has gone with, do you think he's going to stick with that? Yes, absolutely. I even though we have had uh, you know a few problematic series before, we had a we had a, a you know a little bit of a problem winning those series, but we eventually did. We did not lose the T20 series as of yet. Uh, and uh, you know I think Surya Kumar Yadav is a good captain, and we can be looking uh, at you know him being the permanent. Uh, you know, T20 format captain, considering he has given us the, uh, you know, there is no uh, second opinion that he is the best batsman of T20 in this side. And, uh, 
with the experience he possesses he has been playing cricket for a very very long time now uh, even i think the first ipl he was a part of was in 2012 so it's been 13 long 12 13 long years and i think he deserves to be the captain of the indian setup for being consistent for this longer period uh, you know taking uh, uh, the losses or the or the hardships with a bright smile i think this is a positive trait and i think he should be carrying it and uh, you know the the amount of talent and the potential this team has even uh, if we remove these 15 players and bring another bunch of 15 players i think even those will have an equal amount of potential and talent so uh, even if this uh, t20 series does not go our way i think we have to stick with surya kumar yadav and that is the best choice that you know bcci can take okay but similarly this is the second time in the t20 format where sky has been appointed as the captain and you still have somebody like hardik pandya still in the 11 who is the vice captain if i am not mistaken paji do you think that in the next icc event at the shortest format of the game surya kumar is your captain see uh, there were talks about hardik pandya being given captain or could, could have been regarded as a want to take over after rohit sharma but we see what happened in the mumbai indians camp when he was captain and uh, so they as of now team has board has decided to go with uh, surya surya kumar yadav with the backing of gautam gambhir rohit sharma as well as uh, ajit agarkar and the coach a yacht ex coach he must have given some inputs as well that is why the decision has been this uh, surya kumar or yadav is also very good captain is there is no doubt about that the way he turned the match in sri lanka giving rinku singh a bowling bowling himself defending those eight to eight to nine runs and you will see the squad uh, you will see there are eight to 10 bowling options are there in the in the in the squad as well we have not seen your 11 yet but still i'm saying there are 8 to 10 option rinku singh has has bowled regularly in the uh, in the up league and abhishek sharma himself bowls riyan parag bowls surya madhav yeah, he has also started bowling so i guess the directions have been given by the coach head coach to the team or the way they want to carry this because we will be defending the world cup at our home conditions correct That so, is absolutely uh, true. And uh, Utsav, coming to you now, very mi- minimal choices when it comes to who should be the partner for somebody like an Abhishek Sharma at the top of the order. Is it once again going to be someone like Sanju Samson, the batter? Um, I don't think there is a lot of options uh, if yeah. we are not picking Sanju Samson. I think Sanju Samson, you know, I think he deserves a three-match run. And after that, we can you know look at what the future of Sanju Samson can be if he doesn't you know score runs uh, in the Indian conditions as well. Uh, you know we have played Sanju Samson at very weird places for a for a for a very less number of matches. Correct. Uh, playing him in the turning tracks of Sri Lanka for just one match and or just taking him to Ireland just doesn't seem like the best situation. And now it is the perfect situation for for Sanju Samson uh, to show himself at the biggest stage. And if he does, he can he might be. uh one of the backup opening choices considering yashasvi or shuman gill will be our first choice uh, openers uh along with it i will also you know one up with what gurpal sir said that uh, this squad has the number of bowling options that the squad has uh if you remove jitesh and sanju who are the wicket keeping option all of the rest of the uh, players have you know given a turn to the ball at some point uh so yeah uh, an all rounder team in india is something which is very rare to see but now i think is going to become a norm under uh, gautam gambhir so yeah gauti ball is in full absolutely. swing right now absolutely you just pointed out the big big point out here as well for the squad apart from the two wicket keepers we have everyone contributing with the ball but gurpal ji coming to the t20 side of bangladesh now i think tohit rida is somebody they highly rely on when it comes to the shortest format of the game Little Kumar Das becomes a different beast in the shortest format of the game, the white ball cricket. You have a promising Tanzeet Hassan, Tamim at the top of the order. They showed promising signs in the World Cup, but not that promising to make themselves go higher up the order. Do you think how seriously will somebody like a Bangladesh take this T20 series after losing the Test series to it? See, Bangladesh are very good when it's, uh, when when they are playing the pitches like in Sri Lanka, subcontinent, where that they are low and some spin and some movement. Or they in their home backyard. Even the West Indies, they were they were very they were very good at they they did what they could have done best. But playing in the stadiums in India on the flat those flat tracks, October fresh season, uh, Delhi, Gwalior, we know both are small grounds. They both are high scoring ground. Even a Hyderabad, a a bigger ground. But we have seen both Hyderabad produce in the last years I, IPL. So can Bangladesh chase 200? Can Bangladesh put up 200? That's the that's the question. They are they are a side which are comfortable chasing 160, 170. Or can give can give a lot of run for the for the money when the score is around 160 170. But can they have promote, promoted themselves to the higher targets or the higher intent six overs hundred runs seven overs eighty yeah. runs without losing wicket? That's where we have to see. Absolutely, that is something we have to definitely. 
definitely see. But talking about the venues, we're going to have the games now. Three match T20 series. And the first one is at Gwalior. Paji, you know this stadium a lot. Then comes to your stadium, the Arun Jaitley Stadium at Delhi. And then we shift to Hyderabad. Starting with uh, Utsav, Gwalior somewhere, uh, another stadium you can look into. White ball format, T20 format, somebody you can look into. But what could be the ploy? Because Delhi, Hyderabad, or batting paradise, even Gwalior as well. So chasing would yep. be the right ploy at this stage, stadiums, I must say. Um, yep, definitely chasing would be, uh, you know, uh, at this point when a T20 game is played in India, uh, the dew kicks in at the, you know, uh, at around 9 o'clock or something. So, uh, you would always like to win the toss and choose to bowl first uh, so that you get to bat in the easier conditions. Uh, but for, uh, if you are looking into Bangladesh's team, I think they would fancy, uh, you know, getting the I spinners into the game. No, no, okay. I, no, I think uh, a Dew will be a killer for Bangladesh because if they are going to win the series, they have to win, uh, you know, being highly reliant on their bowlers. Uh, Mehdias and Miraz, if the ball starts gripping and turning, then it can create problems for India. Apart from that, only, uh, you know, some bursts of, you know, a short spell of Mustafa Rahman picking up three, four wickets if the pitch is gripping a bit or, uh, you know, the pace of Tandim Shakib. Apart you also from that, have a good leg spinner of Rishi. Dusen, I must tell you. So, yes, there are yes. good enough options. But yes, the Dew might definitely come into play. So, toss could be a huge factor, Paji. We saw in Delhi, uh, in the IPL, runs were flowing, boundaries were going here and then the DPL as well. You think that it's going to be a run fest here at the Arun Jaitley Stadium? Definitely. Uh, Utsa was talking about a Dew. I'm saying in DPL, afternoon game, 300 was scored. Where Ayush Bajaj, uh, Badani and other, other, other openers scored 200 consecutively. So, no, no spin. Delhi pitch has been relayed. It's all batting paradise. You need to have good ballers who can defend in the last couple of overs. That's yeah. that's all you all you wanted. So, Delhi, you bat first, you bowl first, nothing happened. We have, we have been taken to cleaners by SRH. 263, <laughs> we are matched and we were not yeah. able to change that. That's good. So, that doesn't matter. Ha, for so, Gwalior, you can say. For Hyderabad, you can say. So Hyderabad is a big ground as compared to Gwalior and uh, your uh, Delhi, Delhi ground. But I guess it won't matter. Uh, India would definitely would want to use this as a preparation and want to put themselves under pressure by batting first and bowling bowling second. Okay, so, chase, so we are playing okay. we will be playing World Cup here. So we have to yeah, be that's understandable, batting. but I think that first get the series under your belt, win the series two, and then maybe think of in the 30 20 batting first and experimenting is what I think because wins will definitely give you a lot of confidence. So that's where we we have all the three stadiums are going to be belters. High scoring games are expected. Do you must come into play? And if you win the toss, you should definitely like to bowl first. Moving into the players to watch out for three each from India and three each from Bangladesh. I've made my choices Abhishek Sharma, Surya Kumar Yadav, and you have Arsteep Singh are my three players to watch out for. Gurpalji, what's yours? I will again no, see, th you have chosen three. I will again go, go different for go different from you <laughs> as usual. So, Sanju Samson. As you said and Utsav said, I say he will get seven matches. Four of South Africa as well. It's the right opportunity for him to because South Africa is in November and we will be having a we will be sending a test team to Australia BG, early yeah. in, the, in the November. So seven matches for uh, uh, Samson, provided we give him one slot, either fifth, either batting at five or opening, we should give him one slot. Next player, okay. Ryan Para. I would love to okay. see what Ryan Para okay. brings. And if Mayank or Harshit, any of those who plays all the all the three matches, I would be starting for. The new ball, new balling captain. Either of the debutants for, with the new ball as well. So you're going with Rian Parak, Mayan Kyada for now. I'm taking with and Sanju Samson Sanju are Sanju. three players to watch out for. Utsav, six players already have been picked by two of us. Are you going again different? No, no, I'll be sticking with uh, something among these six and uh, probably a few from outside. One of them is obviously Mayan Kyada. Uh, we have not seen a lot of him. Uh, you know, to to be honest, I did not hear much of him even when he was just a domestic player. He just came into IPL, into the playing eleven, and just blew the world apart. And uh, he did. He he bowled extremely well. But uh, you know, even the way he was bowling, the kind of a uh, physique he has, injuries seem to be a thing that would be lurking around. Unfortunately, happened very quickly. And uh, the good thing about Lucknow is that they did not try to push him into the side again. And uh, he was given enough rest. Even in the Dulip Trophy, he was uh, you know taken out of it and straight away given an international debut. Just on the basis of four matches of IPL is something to be looked at, and how long can he, uh, you know, carry on with his fitness that he has uh, newly formed? Apart from that, I'll be obviously looking at Rinku Singh. A uh, slump in form has happened, and we need to address yeah. that. He hasn't been amongst the runs uh, for quite a long yeah. time now. Even the IPL was very mid for him, uh, considering the stature Rinku Singh has now. Uh, his his international numbers though are really good. 
something which uh, is yuvraj singh like when he was in 2007 but the last uh, six but, months have been not been ideal for him to be honest yes yes uh, and that is why he will be a player i would keep a keen eye on apart from that i would i will be looking at ravi bishnoi uh, he is for sure getting not getting retained in his ipl franchise so i think a lot of uh, you know ipl owners would be keeping an eye on him and uh, he was at one point Wait the icc t20 number one bowler no no ravi bishnoi is not getting retained by lucknow super giants oh i because he was not given the you know given enough importance uh, in the setup i is what i feel he was not among the top players and uh, who are we kidding krunal pandya nicholas puran kl rahul are might be the ones who get retained and marcus tony is also there so my three players to look out for from india are going to be uh, ravi bishnoi uh, brinko singh and mayank yadav okay fair enough so three players to watch out for are done and dusted let's move on to the predicted playing 11 starting with the visitors first and paji i think this players pick themselves i'm going with my prediction with 11 for bangladesh ritan das tanzeer hasan tamim najmul hussain shanto tohid ridai mamadullah jakir ali you have the wicket keeper out there mehdi hasan miraz Rish, uh, rishad hussain mustafiz ur rahman taskin ahmed and then you have tanzeer hasan tamim i think it's good enough a balanced squad they can fancy themselves to winning the tournament winning yeah, the series this, this is a good enough good enough uh, squad i am still amazed how mehdi hasan miraz missed the world cup Oh, yeah. Mathias Miraz missed the World Cup. Uh, I still not fathom with the thing. The way he he's a he's a good hitter and he's a smart cricketer and he's a, he bowls beautifully, wicket to wicket. He has this couple of slighter variations, which is good enough for the T20. Because he's getting if he's getting wickets in Test matches, he can be useful as a handy bowler in the T20 Absolutely. as well. He's a good fielder as well. And this so, time they I, have they have picked Mathias and Miraz and they have dropped Sheikh Mehdi. So I think that, that's why yeah, might be the other Mehdi. The other Mehdi, the other Mehdi, Mehdi has been dropped. Yeah, he has a better hitting, hitting ability. He has a score on the hundred against us in the he's most one day day as well. Playing in yeah. all the three formats of the game, so that's fair enough. But Utsav, similarly, when we go to India, I think now where the debate starts onto here's my predicted playing eleven for India: Abhishek Sharma, Sanju Samson, the openers, Suri Kumar Yadav, skipper at number three, Riyan Parag at four, Hardik Pandya at five, Shivam Dubey at six, Rinku Singh at seven. Ravi Bishnoi and your Varun Chakraborty, my two spinners, with Arshdeep Singh and Mayank Yadav, my two seamers. How many changes for you? Um, I'll just go with uh, one change, perhaps. The team obviously is very balanced, uh, which we have made. And honestly, if you if you remove anyone and put anyone, it will not make a change, considering Absolutely. the balance which we are carrying. Uh, probably, I'll I'll probably not go with two spinners, considering how better of a wicket we are going to get. Uh, probably okay. I'll not play Varun Chakravarty for now and give Harshit Rana a go. There are just okay. three uh, out and out pacers we, uh, which we have in the squad, and I would like to have all three of them, especially at a, a stadium like Hyderabad or, uh, you know, to be honest, all three of them, considering the boundary sizes are not going to be that huge, and it's going to be a belter of a wicket. Okay, fair enough. But Paji, similarly, first of all, I'll ask how many changes for you as well. But we have seen in the test matches four lefties in the top of the order for bangladesh similarly in the t20s as well they will have a couple of lefties at the top of the order maybe a consideration for somebody like a washington sundar yeah maybe you can you can fill and then you have to drop shivam dubey and can get in uh, washington sundar but i am i like the idea of uh, utsav as well because since it's a day night game we'll be starting at 7 pm so three seam seamers uh, is definitely re- re- required because who will ball your uh, from over number 16 to 20 who will ball who will ball Because uh, three seamers are definitely re- required. You can play. I I am excited to see maybe uh, the home boy, the local home boy can get a debut at Hyderabad. The Dish Kumar Reddy, I would like because I I don't think so. Hardik Pandya, Shivam Dubey will be playing all the three matches. Either one, either of one will. Hardik definitely will be get, getting. I I rest. think the latter. I think Shivam Dubey might just make way for Nitish Kumar Reddy. Nitish Kumar Reddy. Depending on the uh, combination, because Gautam Gambi prefers righty lefty combination a lot. If that suits them, they might just go. With- So fair enough. We're done and dusted with the entire squad analysis and for the T20 series as a whole. Predictions time now, guys. Starting with itself. You said it's not going to be as easy as you think it was a red ball cricket. Three match T20 series. What's your prediction? Uh, I'll go three nil. <laughs> it's not going to be as easy, but I think India is still clinical enough to uh, win at home. Uh, so yeah, I honestly, as uh, Gurpal sir rightly pointed out, that uh, I do not see this team uh, will be able to get to 200 runs or stop India from scoring 200 runs. So uh, I think it is it it might not be as easy as the Test series was. They might be challenging us if the conditions are even slightly bowler friendly. Uh, then I think the best case scenario for Bangladesh might be 2-1. But honestly, uh, looking at the teams on paper, it seems like a 3-0 win for India. Three nil win for India. Straight, straight answer. Gurpal ji, same answer. Three nil win for India. 
Bangladesh can only compete if the wicket is slightly or slower side because then their their fourth spinner Mustafizul comes into play as well. Okay, mm. so there you have yeah. the off cutters, the dead specialist of Bangladesh, Mustafizul. So there is nothing positive as per the two experts that Bangladesh can take from the Test series. I, I must tell you, as a whole from the tour of India. Fair enough. Thank you so much, Utsav. Thank you to all Gurpal Paji as well. Thank you to all the viewers for watching this one. In India versus Bangladesh three match T20 series starts very soon after we had a white watch today afternoon. Sit back and enjoy. Thank you so much and bye bye.